Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. Related to our previous video looking at multiplayer and VRDK, as well as the previous topic around render streaming, wanted to put that together in this short video on how you can take the current video streaming example and get that working in a multiplayer scenario. Still going to be one server that's dedicated to doing the rendering, but then you can have multiple different devices that connect to that server and send their input and get the, the frames rendered from Unity onto those devices. What this allows you to do is allows each device to get its own camera and see the data of other all the other players, which is basically the same as multiplayer and kind of neat in the sense that it almost feels like you're building an asymmetrical game at some point. So all of that to say, I think it's really cool and an interesting approach to actually doing a multiplayer game, very different from the traditional way of doing the networking, but I still think pretty interesting nonetheless. If you have questions, definitely let me know down in the comments below. And if you find these videos helpful, make sure to leave a like on the channel because it really does help out the channel a ton. Lastly, there's plans for doing some VR and render streaming in the very near future. So if you're excited for that, make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss those notifications. So the base here is really similar to where we started last time in regards to customizing the render streaming application. If you haven't watched that video, definitely encourage you to do so. I'll leave a link in the iCard above. But very simply here, we have that full MetaMask setup that I can eventually integrate MetaMask with at some point. But for, from a practical point of view, nothing here really changed from the previous video. Most of this is a copy of the video player client that was leveraged here. The only core differences that were made are one, we just gutted one of the video streams that was made available here. The reason for that is because this is a video on a per web page basis. So we don't need two videos per player, we just need the one. The second thing I gutted was the video thumbnail that was provided as part of the video streaming example. We don't need that, so I just commented that out. And then right under that, when we call the setup video player, I just only pass in the first element video, not this thumbnail. That's really the only changes that are made to the client, but of course necessary in order to make sure that Unity and the client stay in sync. In Unity, there's a few more changes here, but honestly not too much when we compare that to the web browser input scene that was kind of the basis for this. We do have still both two render streaming cameras that are available here. Both of these render streaming solutions are set up nearly identically. There is the camera streamer, there's the web browser. You still have the camera streamer here, web browser, as well as audio streamer. So nothing really changed there. The only major difference is that instead of the broadcast component that was used as part of the original uh, demo, I've actually created a multiplayer broadcast. And honestly, again, not much changed here. If we go ahead and open it up, it is a copy of the broadcast solution, quite literally. The main difference that I made is on this disconnect and on offer function. Previously, what they would do is assign all of the streams to every client. The downside with that is that because we want video streams to go based on the given camera, we need to assign video streams on a carousel-like basis. So when the first player connects, they get the first video stream. When the second player connects, they get the second video stream. And if you have more than one camera, you add those cameras and you can keep assigning them based on the connection. On offer is that function that allows us to capture when a new connection is made. And so we just need to simply keep track of what are the video streams that have been assigned. And if it's not assigned, go ahead, assign it when a new connection is made. So you can see here what instead of what was done before, where we have a an assignment to everything, we just get the first video stream and we go ahead and assign it. We get the first audio stream and then we go ahead and assign it for that connection. And if that exists, great, we'll go ahead, add everything to a dictionary to keep track of everything. And then we can send that as an answer to the client on 
these are the video streams that I would like you to use. On disconnect, basically the, the main change is since this used to be a list for connection IDs, I've changed that to a dictionary. All we have to do is for that connection ID string, that's disconnecting, make sure we free up those resources and that's it. So again, not complicated coding, but it's basically, this is the area that you wanna take a look at as far as making sure your implementation is correctly matching with what you want to do for the, uh, the connection for a multiplayer scenario. So what this means is that in this case here, I have six different components. So first we have the web browser input. Those are set up here. And then we have the video input, which is one for each camera. The audio input is the same copy. I've just gone ahead and copied it here because we're assigning them again, one per each connection. With this, we can actually just quickly run a demo of this. Okay, we have Unity connected and waiting for an offer. We then go ahead and generate that offer, which allows our first player to go ahead and connect here. You can see as I do WASD, this moves. And more specifically here for our render streaming, if we take a look as I'm moving within the browser, you can see that camera moves. Okay, great. Next, let me go ahead and connect on my phone as a secondary device. You could of course connect in another browser, but I kind of just want to show how this works in the context of a different connection. So making sure I'm on the same Wi-Fi connection, I'm able to connect to my local host port and you can see that I have that up and running. So heading back into the browser here, you can see as I kind of do WASD, the browser is moving, but not my Android phone view. However, similarly, let's go ahead, click here on render streaming number one. And as I go ahead and move the camera here, you can see that rotation is mapped onto the second camera. How does this work with multiplayer is that, let's say I want to toss on an avatar uh, for each of these. So in this case here, I'll go ahead, toss on a capsule for the camera here. Let me go ahead and toss on a cube. So going back and opening the browser. You can see as I move this around, I can now actually see in real time the data from my phone getting mapped onto the cube, the rendering then being taken place and heading back onto my laptop in the browser. Similarly, let's go ahead and let me position this such that I can see the capsule here. And then if I go ahead and click on the browser and start moving that around. Uh, I don't even have to look at my phone and I know that the capsule is moving. I think one of the cool parts about this setup is it's kind of as if you're building a local multiplayer game and then render streaming acts as this bridge that enables you to actually connect these devices all to one central server, remotely rendered for a cloud gaming setup. And it very much simplifies the development process. There's no kind of conceptually networking. There's no kind of state loss, if you will. It's just, did I get the data through WebRTC from the device? And then go ahead and make sure that everyone stays in sync on the render streaming side from Unity. So I just wanted to show it's really not that bad to actually get the render streaming solution to work for the context of multiplayer. Again, if you do have questions about this, definitely let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, I think that'll do it for now. So until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.